I'm Franco Pellegrini. Um, I will be showing you the new JavaScript uh, framework that is going to be uh, in Plum 5. Uh, well, a, bit, a little bit about me, I'm from Cordoba, Argentina. Uh, I've been doing uh, Plum stuff since 2006. I'm an independent contractor since 2011, and uh, well, here I am. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, the sponsors that uh, got me here, uh, and Plus Mful Systems, which is the company where I work, uh, I work for, and they also sponsor me to be here. So, uh, what was the mo motivation uh, for doing this stuff? First of all, uh, as most of us uh, already know about this, the, the, the way we were doing JavaScript in, uh, up to Plum 4, it, it was a really old uh, way of doing it. Um, when you install a fresh new Plum uh, 4.3, uh, 433, um, it, got, it has like 41 JavaScript files registered um, in the portal JavaScripts, and seven of them are already disabled. Um, another issue is the resource registry itself, which is a really old thing. If you look at the, at the commit history, for, for instance, the, the thing that does the packing of the, of the JavaScript, the last commit was from 2007. Um, when, when some new JavaScript uh, library or, or any tool or whatever gets released, uh, usually that means that for it to work in Plone, you need to uh, have uh, the, whoever did the, the package that integrated it uh, come up with a new, with a new version, right? Uh, that usually takes a lot of time. Um, <clears throat> sorry. And uh, it's not possible to develop JavaScript uh, for a Plone site uh, if you're not a Plone developer or if you're not familiar with Plone. You cannot just bring someone that does JavaScript and say, uh, work in this site. He has to uh, know about Plone. Uh, also, if, if you have a, a site already in production and, and a, a customer goes to the portal JavaScript and touches anything, what sometimes happens is that stuff breaks, and as we all know, uh, JavaScript errors are really helpful, um, and it's really easy to know what is going on. Uh, whoa, I'm missing a slide here. Okay, anyway. Uh, <clears throat> the other motiv big motivation is uh, tests. Uh, JavaScript uh, in Plum are were completely untested. Yeah, it's uh, by, by, by test I mean uh, automatic test, right? So ah, that's the slide I was missing. Okay, uh, when a when a customer asks me to fix some JavaScript issue they have in their in their production site, this is how I feel. <laughs> to fix this. <clears throat> Uh, Rock Garbas came with the, with the idea that uh, this was no longer acceptable and we needed to change it. And uh, he started working on uh, this project, Plum Mockup. Um, um, well, it's, uh, it's in a pretty advanced state right now. I think it's almost getting ready to be uh, uh, deployed with, a, with, a, with Plum. Uh, Basically, it, the, the mockup is a, is a collection of patterns, and you can think of patterns as, a, as a, like a module where you will have all your, your different JavaScripts in, in different, different patterns that you will then include in the, in the site. Uh, this allows for really fast development and, and prototyping, and the, the, there's a really cool thing that you don't need to know anything about Plone, Python, build out, anything. You, you just grab a JavaScript developer and he can work and do, and do JavaScript stuff uh, and he doesn't need to know anything about Plone or, or anything. It already provides JavaScript 
that is already compiled or, or mangled or, or minified, CSS2, and uses tools that are the tools that JavaScript developers use today. <coughs> uh, some of these are like Grunt or Bower or uh, Yeoman. So <coughs> Yeoman or Yo is the tool that uh, we use to generate that the JavaScript people use to generate uh, basic skeletons of projects to work on. Uh, this would be the equivalent to Pester. Pester. Grunt is uh, used to build, uh, to, 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 to run tasks, more, more or less like build out does. It has some recipes. You run Grunt, and then it, from each recipe, it will do some stuff, and you will end up with, with uh, compiled compile, uh, files and all that. <clears throat> and Bower is a, is a package manager for, for, uh, for, for JavaScript uh, modules. Blown mockup is based on the patterns lib, which is a JavaScript library, uh, which is the one that introduces the concept of, of uh, patterns. And uh, for blown mockup, the, there's only the, the registry part of this uh, library is the one that is being used. Then the another tool uh, that is part of uh, Mockup is Karma Mocha, which is a plugin to use with uh, Mocha. Uh, Karma is the test runner, and Mocha is a test framework. And then there's Kai, which is the JavaScript library to the assertions. <coughs> Basically, a pattern looks like this. Uh, it's th this is like the almost bare minimum that you need to, to have a, a working pattern. Uh, you have the, the requirements de defined on top, which are the, the, the stuff that this pattern depends on. Some patterns can depend on, on other patterns along with other JavaScript libraries or whatever you need. Uh, you will define what we can call as a class, which extends from the, the, the base class, which is the one on top, mockup patterns base, uh, you give it a name to be used later, and you can specify some default uh, arguments that the pattern will take. Uh, and then there's the init method, with, which is where the, the, the it's the, the same thing as in Python. The init is the, the, the method that will call, be called when, the, when this pattern gets uh, instantiated. Uh, you can add several methods here, and then you, you will be able to to call them as, as we usually do in, in any other language. To use it, uh, you just go to the HTML and uh, specify a class, which is, has to be the name of, uh, the, the, the class name is, um, okay, um, the, the name of the class is part, the, the first part is pat, which is pattern, obviously, and then the name of the pattern. Like the one in the top is the easiest way. And then to specify arguments you want to, to pass to this pattern, you create a, a data attribute, which is data uh, hyphen path hyphen the name of the pattern. And uh, you can either uh, specify like a string or a, like a JSON kind of, of dictionary to be used in the, to, be, to be passed for the init method of the pattern. Finally, what, what kind of um, brings all this together is a, a bundle uh, in, with, in where you will define the dependencies, all the patterns you will like to use in this, in this, when this is compiled. And um, you give it a name. And in the, the bottom part is uh, where the, that function scan on the registry will scan the DOM of the HTML and will initialize all the patterns. So how to use it? There, there are two ways to use it. One is the one that is in the documentation of Plum Mockup right now, which is to get Plum Mockup from, from Git, run make boost, bootstrap. It will download all the needed uh, libraries and, and create the, the environment. You either add new patterns or edit existing ones, run the tests, 
And finally, you, make, you run make bundles, which will give you a compiled JS, just one file, which you will, you will use to include in the, in the HTML. The other way of doing this is depending on Plum Mockup in your own, in your own uh, um, package. For this, I have created last year a generator uh, which uses Yeoman, which is one of the tools I, I mentioned before. Uh, you in, just install the generator, <coughs> run this command, yo, and plow mockup. So it's pretty similar to Pastor. Uh, it will ask some questions, I will show you later, and uh, then you go and add patterns or edit the existing one. Grant test, we run the tests, and finally just grant, we'll do the compilation part. So, <clears throat> first let me show you. how to use this. So we will create a project. Oh, sorry. So we'll go yo plum mockup. I, I already installed the, the thing. I, I, want, I, I didn't want to depend on the network. Uh, <clears throat> but you need to first do the, the first line there. npm install. Hyphen G is going to be global, and the generator of Plum Mockup is the, the one that is going to be installed. So after this, you run the, the, this line, and it asks you for a name. So PSM 14, the package version, I leave it at default, description, this is test for mockup, uh, home page the repository, the author name, email, license, a name. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to make a really easy uh, uh, pattern. Then it will, it will download all the things. I don't know if it's going to take too much. But anyway, it downloads everything and it will run all the, the needed steps for it to work. I already did this, so I'm going to cancel it. Oh, one, one thing. Uh, actually, this generator doesn't really work with the latest version of Plum Mockup, which uh, I'm going to fix it after this. Um, you need to change some minor things, but it's going to work as I'm describing here. So, this is, this is the, the pattern, right, highlight me, yes. So in, in the init of the pattern, I'm, I'm doing basically if the, this is the element where the, the pattern is assigned, which in the HTML, you can see it. here, right, there. You just provide the class and where, and it's going, this element is going to be this element here, jQuery, right? Uh, so basically, I say if, if someone passed me a color, then, um, just apply that color to the, because yellow is the default if there is no attribute uh, passed and the, when instantiating. So I'm going to assign a CSS value directly to the element and if it, if it doesn't pass me any, any argument, I'm just going to assign the class highlight to the, to the element. Uh, then we have the bundle which is here, which I'm having the dependency of a table sorter, which is one of the patterns provided by Plum Mockup, and the highlight me, which I created in the, with the yo. This doesn't matter, you don't pay attention to it 
and unless you need it. And we have So back to the HTML, I'm including jQuery, which is the only package, the only JavaScript library you need to include uh, other than your, your, your compiled JS, and a helper uh, development kind of uh, um, file, which will include the, the needed dependencies uh, while, while using this as in development mode before compiling, okay? Also for the less compiler here, uh, for the little uh, CSS that is here. Just this. So, I'm going to just open the HTML. Okay, so as you can see there's three high, and highlighted text here. The first one is the one I'm de defining here. This span over here it has only the, the, the pattern, so it's highlighted in yellow, which is the, the CSS that was defined here. It, it is just applying the, the class right here. It's, I don't think you can see that. just applying the, the, the class, right? Then the, there's the second one here, which is, doesn't include the, the, the pattern, so it's not highlighted. And, the, and finally this one, which I'm passing the color I, want, I wanted to use. So I'm gonna change this to blue, refresh, and there you have it in blue. This is just applying CSS. Of course, I can just do the, this with CSS, but I, this is just a really easy example of how to use patterns. If I remove this class from here, put it here, refresh, let's remove this, refresh, then the highlighted is here and not here. Then, down here, I'm using the, the table sorter pattern, which I just included from Plum Mockup. And I am applying that, that uh, pattern to only this uh, element in the, in the HTML, right? So I can sort the table from, with, this is what the, the, pattern, the table sorter pattern do, just sort tables from the header, right? I can have a copy of this table right below it, without the pattern, and if I refresh, then this works, because it, it has a pattern, but this doesn't, right? So this is a nice thing that we have, that uh, before we had to do all this logic in the JavaScript files, you have to add classes or whatever and say, okay, for that class do something, for that, this other class do some other thing. In this case, you, some JavaScript developer develops the JavaScript and then whoever is doing the design can decide where to use it. Can come to a table and say, I want to use it here, apply the class for the, for the, for the JavaScript, for that pattern. Uh, I want to customize it, say, I don't want it to be yellow, I want it to be blue. So the pattern provides an argument, which is color, which lets me change that. So, when you have a pretty complex patterns, you can do really powerful stuff in the, in the HTML without touching a line of JavaScript. Um, so for instance, right in the bottom, I'm, I'm having an example with the select2 uh, JavaScript, which is not being included in the bundle as dependency is commented here, right? So as you can see, it's just a select, common select, and this is an input text, doesn't do anything. Just I'm commenting this, I'm pulling the dependency in, and I already have the, the, the class assigned, right? And some, some custom uh, declaration there. And if I refresh it, ah, 
I forgot in the, the CSS part. This imports the, the less for uh, select two and refresh, and there you go, a much nicer uh, drop-down where I can do some search, right? And the tags. It's not, oh, there you go. With the functionality of reordering, which is one of the um, arguments I, I, I gave here. Orderable true, then it's orderable. If I don't pass that, it's not going to be orderable. So I didn't have to go into that JavaScript and, and see how it works. Um, so what, what is the difference between generating this with, the, with this generator and using uh, Plum mockup directly and compiling? Uh, the thing is that Plum mockup includes a lot of stuff, like all these JavaScript files here, all, this, all the patterns are all here. Yeah. Um, all the less uh, files, it's, it's a lot of stuff. And when you compile it, you can, I, I already did that, that here. When you compile this, okay. Um, I don't know why it's not showing. Anyway, um, I think, wow. Okay, uh, you can see that you have, for instance, the the widgets dot mean dot js is eighty eight hundred and fifty four k, which is pretty big to include for just one functionality you want. Uh, there's another one uh, the Long mean JS is 975k. They're pretty big files if you just want the table sorter, so to name one. So what you get with the with the generator is a, a, a JavaScript that is 7k, just 7k. So that's if you just want to use uh, this, this whole JavaScript library uh, in your own project and you don't want to include everything that comes with it, you can use this generator and just include whatever you want. Um, as I said, you only need to run grunt. This will, um, that's it, that's compiled and everything is in the build directory, right? And now you can use it from an um, from just a, a, an index file that I can show you here. So we are only including jQuery here, our minified JS here, and our minified CSS. That's it. That's all the all the things you need, and you have the. Uh, the patterns working here, right? Drop down, the highlighted text, everything. So, the testing. You can come in here in the, in the test folder and write a test for your JavaScript, right? This is all boilerplate in the, in the top section, but the interesting part is this, each of these it defines a test case, which you give, can give it a name, right? And you can uh, call using this, this um, function, you say, okay, uh, I expect to, I expect that this be false. This, this, this L is the element here, which I'm using to test the pattern. 
right? It's a, just a div with a, with a proper class. And I say, when I, when I don't give it an argument, it, it will be a new class for that object, which is going to be named highlight. So before running the, the registry, that is going to be false. And then after running the, the, the registry, with, which scans the, the DOM and instantiate the patterns, then that, that, uh, that class is going to be there. Second test case here, again the same thing. I'll say assign the data attribute with the color blue. I expect the class highlight to not be there. Run the registry so the pattern runs. And now I expect the background color to be blue and I expect the class to also not be there, right? So we do grant test. <clears throat> That's some initiation. And there you go, two of two, success. Now if I change here and I say, after the, the, the pattern is initiated, this class should be present. So true here, save it, and the, the tests run again, and one failed. I can either fix the test or go to the pattern and say, always assign the class. Save, and now two tests of two are successful. Um, in the mockup thing, you also run tests, and they are with a make. I think it's test dev. This will run all the tests for all the patterns. You can even run it, uh, leave it, leave it there in, a, like, on a, on a listening on a on a port, and then you can go with the browser and test manually some something you want you want to test, and then move that to the to the test file. I don't know if this is running actually. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah. So as you can see, this this uh, has huge advantages on on how we were uh, working. Uh, once you have the um, the compiled JavaScript here. We don't, we don't longer need the, the portal JavaScript, right? Uh, we have the ASO, so we include the JavaScript file with the, with the, the, the ASO template, and that's it. it. It doesn't even need requests to go to Plone to get the JavaScript files. And... So these are the places you can go and check for, oh right, Plone App Widgets, uh, I forgot to mention that. Plone App Widgets is the um, integration uh, of Plone Mockup with Plone 4. So you, I, I have a, an instance running here using it. It will use, for instance, TinyMC4 in the, in the rich text. It uses um, for the, the new related uh, widget. 
<coughs> labels, keywords, sorry. Uh, right, the new daytime. Yeah, it's pretty powerful. Um, that's it. I think I, w I was really fast. So, any questions? <coughs> So, Franco, uh, if you're not a core developer, but say you are either theming a site or doing an add-on that's, say, going to have a custom widget on it, w what's your workflow? Are you starting with a, a checkout of mock-up and then modifying it, or is there a way to sort of incrementally add your own work into this? Yeah, that is a really good question. Um, I don't really know what it's the, the, um, the, the, what is going to be the way, the, the recommended way of doing it. Uh, I think the, there's, there's still some discussion going on there. Um, my, my guess will be that <coughs> the default compiled uh, uh, bundle of blown uh, widgets is going to be there. And then you can use something like the gener this generator, do whatever you want, and include just your uh, JavaScript along with, the, with what is already there, and it, it works just fine. Or <clears throat> you can get a mockup, do your changes, compile your JavaScript, and replace the one that is uh, provided with Plone with your new one. The downside of that is that you need to know which version was that Plone mockup was compiled, so you don't get uh, something from GitHub uh, that is broken or something, and you're going to have to fix that too. No one else? Okay.